All right, Julian, is the momentum gone? The momentum is taking a pause, no question about it. You look at a day like today, and you sort of have this barbell that's uh, unnerving markets. On the one hand, semiconductors, the leaders, unquestionably, of the last year, very weak. We had uh, a, a bad report there. And then, as you pointed out uh, moments ago, the transports, which actually have been among the weakest sectors, sort of continuing week, but at the barbell, they're both saying that the momentum in the economy, we don't necessarily see the evidence concretely yet, but we are now going to be wa watching for an economic slowdown. That seems to be one of the biggest concerns about the sell-off we've seen over the past few days, the idea that it's kind of everything, right? It's not, it's the big tech stocks that have been the ballast. It's the cyclical names that everybody really wanted to see sort of come up here. Is there anything left in the middle? Are there buying opportunities right now? We think there are. I, look, from our point of view, uh, we've looked at the past times, and this has obviously become a more open question in the past few days, uh, that what tends to work from the time of the last Fed hike, which lo is long ago now, last July, uh, to the time of the first cut, which may be longer into the future than I think any of us uh, were comfortable with a week or two ago, the defensive sectors tend to work. Healthcare consumer staples, all of the things that are sort of steady growers that can navigate through the volatility. We also like communication services. Uh, but these are the kinds of areas that will provide you sort of a buffer. And they've underperformed for the most part in what was largely a momentum rally of the last year. So do you think we retest the 200 day? And what do you think when? How? So we, we think ultimately that we do. But what we have to do is sort of step back and realize our good fortune as investors, right? You have come almost a straight shot from the October 2022 low um, with, with actually minimal increases in earnings, by the way. Uh, most of it's been valuation. Uh, the average year where there isn't a recession, the pullback is 13%. We were spoiled last year. The average, the pullback last year was less than 10 percent. Volatility collapsed. This is normal. This is going to be healthy. And for us, it's going to present a buying opportunity, particularly since at the moment we don't see those broader signs of the economic slowdown developing. At the same time, though, equity risk premium is what the lowest in 22 years. Why buy stocks, buy bonds? Look, we have, uh, any time we've had clients that have been sort of on edge about their exposure, and frankly, part of, of, of this story around the, the change in momentum is what we've seen in, in the month of March, leadership transition to the energy stocks, which you know very well know, uh, Alex, tends to not be a positive mm -hmm. for the broader market. Think about 2022, think about 2008. And so from that respect, look, Perhaps Chairman Powell throwing a dose of cold water on the reality that maybe we're only going to get one or two cuts or maybe even zero cuts, uh, in theory, uh, depending on inflation. Cash is still a good place to be. It's 5 percent and you don't have to worry about it. Do you buy into the idea of zero cuts or maybe just one cut? Are we really just? No, we, we think it's, it's likely going to be two. Uh, yeah. Look, the Fed has made it very plain. They want to cut. Of course, the, the problem uh, around cutting is, is the fact that the closer we get to the election, the yeah. more complicated the story comes. Yeah. But we would argue part of the dynamic was they started talking about it perhaps too early, but to put it out there well in front of the election. Were you surprised, though, at the comments he made? Because when we came out of that last Fed meeting, the, the message was dovish. At least that was an interpretation. And then we got the comments from Powell the other day, and, well, it was not dovish. No, it, 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 was, it was not dovish. I think maybe the bigger surprise was actually, if you think about it yesterday, that the market didn't continue the sell-off. Yeah. But tapes that are as difficult as this one is right now yeah. have an insidious way of sort of lulling you into a false sense of security. And as we can see yeah. today, it's, uh, it really is a back and forth, but the volatility net-net is higher.